If you're not having fun on your runs, you need to go back to the drawing board and like reevaluate what's going on and how can you change it because you're right. You know, it's not our job to run. No one's forcing us to run. Um, at the end of the day, no one really cares <laughs> if we go on a run or not. You know what I mean? Welcome to For the Long Run, the podcast exploring the why behind what keeps runners running long, strong, and motivated. I'm your host, Jonathan Levitt. Through personal and professional connections in the running world, I have the privilege of getting to know some amazing athletes. I've always been fascinated by the psychological aspect of running, and this podcast is aimed at exploring this and much more. I hope you enjoy. Welcome back. I have Natalie Mitchell joining me on the podcast today. Natalie and I have had a saga of a time getting this um, podcast scheduled and recorded and and have had a, a comically large number of uh, uh, technical issues. So Natalie, uh, very excited to hopefully have a full conversation with you here today on the podcast. Oh my gosh, me too, Jonathan. You know, I think this has actually been really fun. We've gotten to know each other um, a bit better with this whole craziness. <laughs> that is true. And you had me on your podcast in the meantime. So thank you for that. Um, I think by the time that this episode airs, uh, that will be out. So go ahead and check out um, the Sweet Run podcast uh, for my episode over there. Uh, but in the meantime, let's talk about you. Uh, who is Natalie? Oh man, that seems like a multi -layered... harder the second time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, a multi layered question. Okay, who is Natalie? Um, okay, so I am a mom of three kids. I am a runner who loves this sport. I am a wife, um, and I just feel like right now I'm an extremely busy person. <laughs> More so than than usual, I'm a podcast host, and I'm just a person who really loves this life. And you can feel the joy. So if you don't follow Natalie on on social, I highly recommend it. Um, you can feel the joy in her posts, and um, and it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's contagious. Um, in a good way. So thank you for that. Um, so again, given this is a running podcast, let's sort of set the stage for you as a runner and then we'll dive into all the other aspects of life. Um, do you remember your first run? So yes, I think I do. I mean, I started running at a really young age, but I remember running with a, fr a friend of mine, a little girlfriend of mine. We were just little kids and we had a cornfield in the front of our house and a cornfield in the back of our house, in our backyard um, when I was growing up in Ohio. And I just remember running through the cornfields with my next door neighbor, who was a good friend of mine, and exploring and just kind of like looking up at the big blue sky and running through these cornfields and wondering what we were going to find. And our feet were dirty. And it was like the epitome of being a kid. And it's like, there's so many moments in running that mean a lot to me, but I distinctly remember that moment and just feeling so free and just feeling like, I don't know, like life was just a good place. And I just wanted to constantly be outside running around. So that was my first memory of running. And how do you keep that same vibe uh, true today? That's a good question. So I kind of take the same approach. Like I feel like, you know, we just, I feel like sometimes we get so bogged down with all the things that we have to do. And like running is the one, the one part of my day where I just feel like a little kid, like I can just go outside and explore and do all these really fun adventures, whether it's like I have a hard workout or whether it's just an easy run. And I just feel like I can literally unplug and get away from everything. And I think that's one of the reasons why I just keep running. I mean, yeah, I have goals and all those things, but I mean, just the pure love of the sport of being outside, feeling my feet on dirt 
that is, there's nothing like it. Totally agree. And so now you are, you're in Southern California, right? And you've got plenty of dirt around you. Is that, is that a true statement? That is a true statement. We are planted firmly in Southern California with a lot of dirt, grass, and sand. (laughs) So it is, it's pretty sweet um, living here. You can run year round and yeah, we love living here. It's a lot of fun. Can you not run year round elsewhere? (laughs) <laughs> that, oh yeah you know what <laughs> you, on that. you can run your round anywhere. you have to know i was gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> you're right you can yes. run your round anywhere it's just um you have to kind of think a little bit more about what you're gonna wear <laughs> wear more clothes that's right yeah no that's a good point though so <laughs> yes um so you've been running for a while you started when you were a kid um, we haven't had races in a while, um, but it looks like maybe they're coming back at some point soon. Boston registration happens in a few weeks, which is wild. Um, what's What's been keeping you going the last year or so? My sanity. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, like you're running from your sanity. No, I'm not running from. I'm running to hold on to the little bit of sanity. <laughs> I have left with, you know, I'm sure as so many people listening can agree that have kids that, you know, I have three kids. And so it's been exactly a year since everything kind of blew up and the kids were at home learning from home. And suddenly we had to re, you know, think our whole lives and how we were going to navigate through all of that and still helping them educate them and still, you know, doing our work and, and, and all of that. So it's, uh, I don't, I I forgot what I was going to say, but (laughs) it's been quite the, uh, it's been quite the adventure. Um, and what has kept me going? I mean, you know, I feel like through the craziness of everyone being locked at home, that was the one thing that we could do is like, you know, for me, I could get out every day and go for a run. Like I I knew that wasn't going to go away. Actually, it did go away for a little while. We had some trails that closed here in Cal- California was hit pretty hard. Southern California, we were hit pretty hard. So we, at one point, our beaches were closed and we had like all of our major trails were closed, which was like, that was crazy. Um, but you always had the ability at least to run around your neighborhood this whole time. And so that has been um, keeping me going. And I mean, yeah, I knew, you know, I think, you know, it's interesting because with running, it's kind of like, sometimes you're training because you have this race coming up and you really want to be ready for it, be prepared for it. And then there's other times when you're just, you're just running to stay fit, to stay happy, to, to have your time of meditation. And that's kind of what the past year has been for me. I mean, it's like, yeah, I want, I definitely want to keep, you know, a good level of fitness and be ready to jump into a training block when that is, when it's time for that. But, um, it's just been nice to be outside because we spent so much time inside. So that's, what's kept me going. And in the meantime, you've also launched a podcast. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I mean, it's funny because, um, you know, being locked in your house for a year, pretty much, or in your little general little little area of, of your neighborhood and not being able to really go out much really gets the creative juices flowing. And for me, I mean, I knew I wanted to start a podcast a while ago. I just, I didn't know what direction I wanted to go or kind of the stories that I wanted to tell. And so it's been neat because I suddenly had a little bit of time to to dedicate to that and kind of like, okay, well, how do we want this to to go? And what do we want to say? And how do we want to help our help people that might be listening? And so that turned into launching a podcast a few months ago. So we're excited about it. And what's been the most surprising part about the podcast? Oh, um, I would say it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work, probably more than I realized. 
And I say that in the sense that I really love what I do. Um, and so it, I, it doesn't bother me um, because I love it. I love talking to the people that we have talked to and the people that we're going to be talking to and the topics. I mean, the, the topic is about running and travel. And so that is, I'm super passionate about that. Gerald, my husband, who is my co-host, is we are both super passionate about that. Um, and it's a lot of work, but, but I think when you, when you do something that you truly love, it suddenly doesn't turn into work. It's, it's a passion and you're just like, well, we're going to get it done no matter what. So it's been a, it's been a journey. It's been really fun so far. What have been, yeah, it's, it's wild. Just like you have no idea what to expect when, when you started and then you sort of learn on the go. What, um, what have been some of the biggest takeaways from, from your guests? That's a good question. Um, I would say it is really interesting to talk to runners in a different way, to really, you know, dig into where they live and the trails and the the roads that they love to run on and for them to share that. It's kind of an intimate it's a little bit of an intimate piece of information. It's kind of like, you know, I run here almost every day or I love this trail so much and you know, maybe not a lot of people run that trail and suddenly they're kind of sharing it with everybody. And it really does make you want to go to that location and and do everything that they've shared with you. You want to eat at the same restaurant that they shared and go on that same run. And um, so, yeah, it's just been a really neat experience and I've taken away a lot. I mean, mostly I've taken away. Uh, I can't wait to get vaccinated and pack our suitcases and, and start traveling to some of these great places. Yes, for sure. And do you think you'll do uh, uh, live podcasts or face to face? Yes, we definitely want to. Yeah, we've talked about it. I think it'll be fun to to go live with the show and um, it'll be interesting to kind of see what that looks like. But um for sure we want to travel to all the places and we've we're like now that I'm talking to you we're like 21 episodes in so we know we have you know 21 places we want to travel to and somehow we you know we'll incorporate that into some sort of a live show at some point and it'll be a blast it's really a lot of fun and and runners are really cool people so everybody you talk to has a great a great vibe. So it's, it's really, really fun. Um, yeah, the, the ability to travel and do the conversations in person and share, share it that way. I can't wait. Um, it's definitely, so my podcast was, uh, the opposite. I started live and went virtual. Um, and the more virtual podcasts I do, the more appreciation I have for the first uh, it was about 60 episodes that were done face to face. And it's just such a different experience. Like w- when we recorded yours, um, we could see each other. I've started testing out video um, through the platform I record on, but it's still not the same. It's like that you don't have the like joking around and, and, you know, small talk beforehand and, you know, walking away afterwards and all this and that. So um, hopefully some changes ahead uh, once we're all vaccinated and get to fly around the country again. I know. And you know, Jonathan, I don't think I knew that. I didn't know that you started out, um, your podcast with live interviews. That's really fun. Well, so not, not necessarily live, but, but face to face. I mean, yeah, yeah, um, so yeah. I, yeah. What I, yeah. So what I, what I, the, the reason that I started my podcast was I was having all these conversations with people already just out of personal curiosity through what I get to do for work. Um, in places like Colorado and Arizona and California and Oregon. Um, and I realized I was like, hmm, I could, I could share these conversations. And, um, so I was listening to a podcast between Mario Frioli and Billy Yang and, um, they were talking about like starting a podcast and I forget which one of them said it, but one of them said they were, they were talking about, this was in, um. I want to say 2018 in the like December and they were saying iron sharpens iron. 
like, great, there are more podcasters out there. That just requires everyone to, you know, step up their game. And that was 2018. And now, you know, so many more people have podcasts, particularly um, within the last year. And so there's like so much competition for, um, you know, the hour run that you listen to podcasts on and whatnot. So it just makes everyone better or forces everyone to be better because there are more of us out there. I know. I find myself listening to podcasts. It used to be I would just listen to a podcast on a run. And now I'm like folding laundry, listening to a podcast, doing the dishes, listening to a podcast, you know, <laughs> doing it because there's so many, you're right. There's so many, and there's so many really good ones um, out there and there's so many great stories to be told. So yeah, I think it's a, uh, but you're right. It does, it does um, you know, push everyone to, to really bring their A game to, to the platform because there's so, there's so many great ones out there, but yeah. And I love your podcast, Jonathan. Thank you. And I love yours. (laughs) Um, so what's, what's the goal with your podcast? What, what's the, what's the mission? So, you know, we, we originally started Sweet Run to work with, um, independent boutique hotels to provide a service for their guests, which is simply the best, safest routes to run. Um, and to just kind of, you know, give the the hotel guests a whole run experience. Um, and then, you know, the pandemic happened and a lot of things happened. And so we were like, there's, there's other angles. There's other ways to kind of get to the audience that we want to, that we want to reach. And we and we thought a podcast is a great way to do this as well. Um, so I think that the overall mission is to, to keep going strong on the podcast, to allow, people access to, to be able to discover these great runs and these beautiful locations directly from the runner, which is the best person to get the information from, as well as um, continue to work with hotels and, you know, provide their guests with a whole run experience. So just the whole travel you know, and running wrapped up together. Yeah. I love it. I didn't, I didn't know that. Now all of your questions uh, about Boston make a whole lot more sense. <laughs> Um, do you know, do you know Chris Heisler? So I don't know him personally, but I know that he was the run Weston concierge for a a long time. Yeah. So that was, that was his job. His job was to run that program, um, within the Weston hotels. And, uh, it was basically, you know, a, a micro version of that, or I guess macro, if you want to call it all of Weston hotels. Um, and so it's super cool. It's like I've I I know him um, fairly well, and I've heard a lot about this program. And unfortunately, he's not with the program anymore. Uh, but it's such a great idea, right? Like, what's the best way to explore a new place? Um, sure, you can go for a bike ride, but it's challenging to bring your bike places. You can drive it, but that's boring. Um, or you can run it and you know see a, a new city that way. Um, so I think it's a it, that's awesome. Um, and then you eat, eat at all the restaurants that, that people suggest. <laughs> I know you can literally, yes. And that's like my favorite part of the, one of my favorite parts of the conversation is talking about all the food, but yeah, you know, I, I, I to- I'm totally right there with you. I mean, I think, I honestly think the worst way you can, I probably, people are going to say what, but I think one of the worst ways you can explore a new place is in your car. Um, and right. I think, and I know I'm biased because I'm a runner, but I think one of the very best places, best ways you can explore a place is when you put on your running shoes. And that for me is, you know, I've, I've had some time to travel and I feel like the places that I've really have been able to explore and fall in love with have been when we've gone on runs throughout that city or town. And I'm like, oh yeah, I want to come back more and explore this place or, oh my gosh, I would have never seen this view if I would have been in my car, you know, and there's, you can just go on and on and on. So I really do believe the best way to see a new place is on a run. So where did your, where did this desire to travel and explore come from? Have have you always been that way? Yeah. You know, I've always been kind of a wanderlust type of person Um, from, you know, just from when I was, I mean, I just never had a time in my life when I didn't want to travel. I just remember being 
a kid and I loved to read. I was a voracious reader, which I, <laughs> I tell my kids that now. I'm like, you know, you guys have to fall in love with reading. I hope that they fall in love with reading as much as I did because I thought it was the best thing in the world to be able to sit under a tree and get a book. And I would literally pour myself into the book, into the characters. I would imagine myself being friends with the characters and living with where they lived. And I'd imagine like what it would be to go to that place. And so I loved reading so much and that's where it started. And then, um, and then, you know, as I got older and I just started traveling and I just was, you know, thinking to myself, I want to travel the world. I want to go to all these places. And um, so, I mean, I still have a ton of traveling to do. I've only been just a tiny bit of, I've only seen a tiny bit of the world, but um, just from the little bit that I've seen, it's like, I love the cultures of, of these, of different places and people and different languages and different smells of food. and. Um, you know, gorgeous views. And, and so I fell in love with that whole, and I, I literally was like, I could be one of those people who pack up their whole life and go on the road and like live like a nomad. <laughs> that would be pretty, I would love to do that actually. Um, so we'll see. Where would you go first? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Oh man, there's so many places. Um, I or what? Like, what would be the first? What would be the road trip that you would go on? So oh, there's so many places. Oh my gosh, this is a hard question. Um, I could totally see. My, I've always wanted to go to New Zealand, and I mean that just seems like an outdoor paradise. So I would love to just go and then and just either bike or run throughout that whole country. Um, there's so many parts of Asia that I really want to explore. Um, there's so many parts of South America that I really, really want to explore. I mean, I would love to go to Patagonia. I would love to, oh my gosh, there's just so many places. I'd love to spend some time in Ecuador. So I could go on and on and on, but, um, yeah, I hope to do that. I hope to be able to um I'd love I'd love to go on the road for a year and just take a year off and travel the world. So we'll see. See if I can talk Gerald into doing that. <laughs> <laughs> My next question was going to be what's stopping you, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know life, responsibility, kids and family. <laughs> yeah, kids, all of that. Um so I don't know. Do you we'll think see. it's something you'll do? Do you think it's something you'll do someday? Yeah, I do. I do. And you know, it's funny because, you know, every time I bring up something about travel, Gerald will, Gerald will say, well, that, you know, that's exactly what we're doing with the podcast. Or why do you think I'm like doing the podcast? Like he always is like, because I know how much you love to travel. He loves to travel too. And so I think we're eventually going to like somehow wrap our whole life around this lifestyle and who knows where we'll where we'll end up? I'm sure at some point we'll we'll end up somewhere exotic, and we'll definitely record all of it <laughs> on a podcast episode. <laughs> nice. Well, I can't say I'm in an exotic place, but I definitely recommend the pack up and you know dramatically change things uh, at least once. No, you're totally doing it, Jonathan. I love. I mean, that is awesome what you have done. Like you're just like. I'm going to Colorado and you packed it up and went and I, I'm so excited for you. I love following your, your journey over. The, it's really cool. Like all the things that you're doing. And I think I saw you snowmobiling the other day and cross country skiing and all of that. So it's cool. Yeah. There's something about being outdoors that um, I wish more people would experience. I mean, most of the people, you know, listening to this podcast probably run, um, and if not, hello, uh, give running a try. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> hello, welcome to the world of running on for the long yeah. run podcast. How did, how did you find this podcast if you don't run? Um, uh, seriously, if, if that applies to you, I'm curious, please send me a message. Um, yeah. but what I was saying is like being out here put me in a totally different mental 
space than I've ever been before. Uh, my grandma just commented on a Facebook post, like, do you ever go inside? <laughs> it's like, yes, I, I, I'm still working and I'm still, you know, my reply to her was sometimes I go inside at night, but, um, but yeah, it's, 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 you know, all these people talk about nature as therapy. Again, I don't think nature is therapy. I think it's therapeutic. Um, but there's so much to be said for even just spending an, like 30 minutes outside or going for a walk or, you know, it doesn't have to be next to 14,000 foot mountains. Um, like, like I have the pleasure of, of doing at the moment, but even just in your park or whatever, um, is, uh, I mean, there's, there's science that validates this. It, it actually is true that it makes you a happier and healthier person. Um, so if, if it's not part of your routine outside of running, I definitely uh, suggest giving it a try. I cannot agree with you more. I mean, I, there's definitely been times during this pandemic where, you know, say for instance, I had a day off. So I usually run, I mean, before I got injured, I was running six days a week. But so say for instance, there's a day that I wasn't running. Um, we usually are outside. But for whatever reason, this one particular day, I didn't go outside. I don't think I was feeling good or one of the kids wasn't feeling good or something like that. And I didn't go outside. And I can't tell you how much my mood changed. It was just like, how, I couldn't understand like how people at least, you know, to be able to go for a walk or to go outside. It really does change your whole mood and kind of the way you navigate through your day. And I can't imagine, you know, not having the outlet of breathing fresh air and being outside. I mean, it, there really is nothing like it. So for sure. You know. Let's talk about that injury. Uh, what happened and, and when? Yeah. So I had knee surgery in the end of October. Um, and it was, it was an interesting injury in the sense that like, it wasn't like, oh, I did something and then I heard something and I had to have surgery to fix it. It was kind of like one of those mystery type of things where we don't know what caused it. It was actually a cyst in my knee and it didn't hurt while I was running or training. So that didn't, it didn't affect me running. But at night when I would go to sleep, I would be in an, in an enormous amount of pain and it just made my whole life pretty miserable. I mean, you have to sleep. I mean, as athletes, we know, and as human beings, we have to sleep. And so that was really tough for me. So we tried a bunch of different, not a bunch of different things, but I tried one particular um, method of trying to solve it with my doctor, which meant just draining the cyst. So I would get it drained and then it was better. And so we were just hoping that that would cure it. It wouldn't come back. And so it, then it came back. So we drained it again and it came back. And then it was like, okay, I can't keep doing this. And also the anticipation of like, oh my gosh, am I going to be in the middle of a training block and it's going to come back and like, I won't be able to sleep and all these things. So, um, so that's when I had to talk with my doctor and he's like, you know, we can get rid of this really quickly. We can just go in, surgically remove it, check to make sure everything is good with the rest of the knee. And which I think it is, you know, once I, you know, he kind of really looked at my MRI and was like, you know, your meniscus is fine and, um, your ACL is fine. So let's just go in and take this, um, cyst out and have you go on about your life. And I'm like, done. So we had it um, removed at the end of October and, and it was great. I mean, in the sense of like, it was the best type of surgery that I could have had because I was able to be weight bearing after the first couple of days. Um, so I was on my feet and I was able in like, oh my gosh, I want to say a week I was on the bike. And so it's been really, you know, it, it was the best case scenario. I was able to, to keep moving and on the bike and, and then maybe a month later I was in the pool. And so, um, and then I was running again, probably two months later. So it, it's not been bad at all. And it's been a great road back to getting fit, trying to get fit again is what I'm working on. And, um, I'm super excited about where I am right now, though. I want to talk about that because 
I was always the runner who was like, run. You want to be a better runner? Run. Run more, run more. And I still believe that. I mean, hey, if you want to be good at your craft, you got to work at it. You've got to run more if you want to be a better runner. But I do believe heavily in the power of cross training and really incorporating that into your running and how much it can really make you stronger. And so it's really cool now, like when I go on my runs, I honestly feel like a panther. (laughs) I know that's kind of crazy to say that, but I feel this like strength that I've never felt before. Like when I, I can feel when my foot hits the the ground or the dirt, I just feel like this extra spring in my step. And I feel really powerful from all the weights I've been doing and all the pool running and all of the, you know, tons of biking Um, and now incorporating the running and, and I'm starting to do some workouts now. So I'm just like, I'm pretty darn happy with where I am right now. I love that. There's a, the saying I like to share, which is sometimes you have to pull back to spring forward and it feels like you did exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny because this is the second surgery that I've had on the same knee. So, um, needless to say, when I realized that I had to have it done, I was like, Oh, you know, I'm like, I don't want to have another surgery on the same knee. And what is that like ultimately going to look like? But, you know, knock on wood, I've been really lucky. And, um, yeah, I agree with you. I feel like I'm, I'm, I've had to like pull back and now the spring forward is going to be pretty sweet. So we'll see what happens. What are you springing forward towards? To be the very fastest version of myself. I, um, I just want to be strong and run faster than I've ever run before and kind of just see what exactly I'm capable of and have a whole lot of fun doing it. Yeah. What are the, um, what are the, the specific ways you'll, you'll get there? So I'm working with my coach, Jared Carson is my coach and I, I'm digging his philosophy. He's like, you know, Natalie, we've got to get you super strong. That's going to help you run even faster. And, um, and like I said, I'm just, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good about that. And so we're, we're definitely taking that path. Um, and as far as like the weights are concerned, we're not focusing so much on the upper body as we are on the lower body. Um, and so I feel like I've got all these different elements being thrown at me and it's kind of like shaking things up. Like I haven't really trained like this before. Um, so we're, we're going to go, we're going to go down that path. Um, and then we'll, you know, we're starting to put in more miles slowly, but surely and more, um, I'm starting to do some workouts, just a few little short workouts. We're going to focus on speed. I feel like I, in the past, I've always focused on distance, distance, distance with some speed, definitely, but now speed's going to be at the forefront. We're going to really focus on that. Um, and then we'll see what happens. I'm just excited. Um, you know, I, I really love running, so I'm, I'm open. I'm like, let's try something new. Let's do some new stuff and kind of see where it all shakes out. That's awesome. Is gratitude a piece of that? It's something I like to talk about on here, particularly with people who have been injured or who have taken some time off. Oh my gosh. Yes. hundred percent. How so? I mean, gosh, anybody that's been injured or has any sort of injury, I think can totally relate to this. But I, I just, my gosh, I feel so grateful. I think, um, I think there's like, you know, you kind of put it into two different categories. So you have your minor injuries where it's like, oh, you know, I have some shin splints or I've got this or that, you know, little thing that's niggling or bothering me. And then you have major injuries where, you know, the only way to cure it is through surgery. Um, And those are pretty serious because you don't know what's going to happen on the other side. You don't know, you know, exactly how it's going to heal, how you're going to feel, how is it going to affect you. And I think when you get past that and you realize you're going to be totally fine, if not better than ever, there's, I mean, (laughs) I can't imagine not feeling so grateful, grateful for my body and like, kind of like 
hey, thanks. Thanks for being so awesome and like, you know, totally, <laughs> totally letting me beat up on you in a sense because as an endurance athlete, you know, we put our bodies through so much. I mean, we're asking our bodies to like, hey, can you run 80 miles a week, 70 miles a week? And can you do this? And can you do that? And um, can you run really hard right now? And I mean, there's, we ask so much of our bodies and I think, um, I think we have to, you know, we have to talk to, talk to ourselves and say, Hey, you know, thank you so much for doing this for me. I know I'm asking probably, I'm, I'm asking more than the average person and I appreciate it. So yeah, I, I'm very, very grateful. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's super powerful and particularly like in the, in the moment when things are hard, when you are running, um, it makes it not easier, but more manageable. So I'm here at 10,000 feet and my run today was 10 miles easy, which is a misnomer at this <laughs> elevation, um, and hill situation. And so I was, I don't know, like three or four miles in, like in the middle of like a two mile, like 400 foot climb or 500 foot climb. And I'm like, damn, how cool is it that we get to do this? And I was just thinking back to last year when I took six weeks off for a, uh, an injury. And I was like, man, how much would Jonathan of February, 2020 kill to, to be doing this right now? Or, or how, how much would he like yearn for this? Like, wow, this sucks in the moment type feeling. Um, and I think that that, that component is incredibly powerful. I mean, it, it got me up the hill, <laughs> um, and then down the hill. Um, and I think that I, I never had that perspective in the past. It was always just like, Oh, this sucks. But it's like it, that pressure is a privilege and it's a privilege that we get to do this. It's you know, nobody's forcing us to run. Um, and I think a lot of us need that reminder sometimes. Like if, if you, if you're not having fun, don't do it. Oh my gosh. I could not agree with you more. I was just, I just wrote a post about that the other day. And I was like, if you're not having fun on your runs, you need to go back to the drawing board and like reevaluate what's going on and how can you change it? Because you're right. You know, it's not our job to run. No one's forcing us to run. Um, at the end of the day, no one really cares <laughs> if we go on a run or not. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, it, this is all for our self satisfaction and for our personal goals and for things that we want to do with our life. And so if you're not having fun, first of all, running is so much fun. So if you're not having fun, there's some ways that, you know, change it, try, try to, you know, change it, go on a new route or I don't know, maybe change the times that you're running. Maybe it's putting so much pressure on your normal life. I think a lot of times we put a lot of pressure because we we were like, I have to get this run in because I'm, I have to train for this marathon or I have to train for this race. And this is the only time I can do it. And sometimes it can cause a lot of pressure on, you know, unnecessarily, like we don't have to put that kind of pressure on ourselves. Um, so yeah, I think it's important to, to have a lot of fun with it. And I do think too, with injury, not that I'm wishing injury on anybody, but I do think it's a good reality check sometimes because I do, I, I feel like sometimes I'm going along with my running, you know, so there's been times where I've gone years without an injury and it's kind of like, oh, okay, you know, you don't mean to take it for granted, but you're like, oh, I have to go on this, you know, 10 mile run today. And then I have to like do my long run on the weekend. And you're kind of like trying to figure out your schedule and, and a little bit lamenting about it. Like, oh man, I have to do all this. And then you get injured and you're like, Oh my gosh, like what was I ever like what thinking I would about? Like, do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what what would I do to have that <clears throat> have that moment again? Like I'll never complain about going on a run again or I'll never like you know, say anything about it except it's the best thing ever. Definitely. Yeah. So you said something um that I I wanted to um sort of add to. You said we're not professional athletes, so we should be having fun. I spoke with a professional athlete who said that you know, she wouldn't still be doing this if she weren't having fun. Um, on a podcast I did with Aisha Pratt Lear, um, she's 30 years old and she's like, I've been in the sport for 
15 plus years and and I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't enjoy it. Like she's she's living that that so much so that the first time that we um scheduled our podcast um Corey McGee had run an 800 meter PR in practice and they went out for mimosas to celebrate. <laughs> And so oh. she like couldn't she couldn't make the podcast because she was out you know drinking mimosas, and I was like, "That's fucking awesome! <laughs> like that's what it should be. Like we should be, like we're not robots. They're not robots. Um, we we are only we only get these great performances when we feel relaxed and smooth, and sort of at peace. And if fun and play is a big component of that." Um, you can be successful no matter what, and it doesn't matter what the time on the clock is or whatever. Like you can still go have those mimosas. Um, but I just thought it was it was so perfect that here she is, a professional athlete now for Puma, and um, a core tenant of her training is is fun. And if you look at Team Boss, like they're having the you know the most fun out of anyone. It seems. Oh my gosh. I just want to go and like hang out with team boss for the day for a weekend. I mean, they live in, you know, they're in Colorado in this beautiful location and they, they, you're right. They seem like they're having a ton of fun. Um, they all seem like they get along so well. And, you know, I really do think that, I think you can take that attitude with any career that you have. I mean, for some people, for some lucky people, they get to have running as their career and they get paid to do it. Um, and whether it's running or whatever you choose to do in your life, you should have fun or you should really enjoy doing it. And is it going to be fun every single moment of every single day? No, of course not. But I think overall, if you're like, this is so fulfilling to me, or I'm having such a good time, then you know, you're in the right career. And if you're waking up every day and you're dreading it, then I think, you know, you need to make some changes. So, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's uh it it can't be overstated. Um so talk to me about so I know we talked about your your spring forward uh approach to this year and you know, getting as fast as you can be, but do you have any do you have any distances that you're that you're eyeing? Yeah, I mean, I I definitely want to be um faster in the marathon. I mean, I have a long way to go um as far as what I'd like to run in the marathon. And I think that I, in order to get there, I'm going to have to set a lot of PRs in some shorter distances along the way. And so I'm excited about that. Cause I just, I think I was always focused on like my marathon time, my marathon time. And I didn't really think closely about my 5k time or not too much about my 10k time, probably a little bit more about my half marathon time, but I, I, you know, I'd love to get really, you know, as fast as I possibly can in the 5k and the 10k. And I know that'll all translate into being faster in the marathon. And, you know, I think let's, let's just, let's just go there about age. So I'm in my forties. Um, we live in a world where age is, can be the center of a lot of conversations I think that people um, tend to limit themselves and what they can do when they reach a certain age or approach a certain age. And I think for the decade of the 40s, um, there's a lot of dread and a lot of whispers and a lot of I'm getting old um, before we reach that decade. And I'm just finding that like, more than ever, I'm excited about this decade. I'm excited about the fact that there's so much possibility. Like for me personally, for me personally, I haven't been in a, I wasn't in a position for whatever reason. I think it was just because I never thought that I could run fast or it never really crossed my mind. It wasn't like, I can't, I just never thought about it. Um, after college, like I, you know, I got injured in college. Um, and then I didn't, think about like taking running to like a bigger level. I just knew I wanted to run a marathon and that was it. But anyway, my point is, is that, um, I'm just really excited about where I am in my life right now. I'm excited about being in my forties. I'm excited to see what I can do in my forties 
And I hope that that'll, that will inspire other women and other people along the way. Like, you know what? We're not old. There's so much left to do and it's going to be so cool. And like, go for it, you know, and don't stand in your own way. And by standing in your own way, and you can stand in your own way by saying, oh my gosh, I'm getting old. I'm old. I'm old. I'm too old to do this. I mean, I've definitely had people when you tell them like, okay, I had knee surgery or whatever. And then they have that look of dread in their eyes because they're like, oh, I, they know that I'm in my forties and it's kind of like, oh, the hips and the knees and you know, all this stuff. And they, they've had their share of injury or whatever. And most of the people are not runners, but they have all of these preconceived notions like running is bad for your knees. And oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing this. And how are you going to recover? And, and all this stuff. And there's so many, um, preconceived notions about running well in your 40s. And so I'm just excited to see what in the heck my body can do. So I'm ready. I love it. So uh, more than 50% of my audience is in the 30 to 45 range. So I'm guessing that this, this part of the conversation is going to apply to a lot of people um, so maybe let's dive a little further into it. How did you get to that place where you're not dreading this process that we all go through, but instead looking forward to it and and um, continuing to be excited about about the challenges? You know, that's a really good question that I've often thought about only because um, I find myself hearing it from people so much more. Um, in this space of running about, and I know age is a big deal because if you're a professional runner and you've been running since you were 13 years old and, you know, by the time you're 37 years old, you've got a lot of miles under your belt. And, and so I get that, especially running at a super high level. Um, at some point your body's going to break down. And, but for those of us who are not professional runners, um, and for me, like, you know, after college, I wanted to start, you know, I started running marathons, but I didn't, I wasn't running at a high level. And, you know, when I was in my thirties and having kids and I had my last kid at, at age 40, I wasn't thinking about running at a high level. It wasn't until, you know, I was like 40, I was just writing about this too, but I had just, I was just about to turn 42 years old that I was like, I'm going to hire a coach and I'm going to see what I can really do. I've been kind of like going along on my own, running marathons here and there and having kids and all this stuff. But I, I think that there's a lot of potential there that I haven't tapped into in a really long time. And who's to say that I'm finished yet? Um, and so I don't know what gave me that confidence. I think some of it has to do with like my parents. I think mostly my mom, because I think. I, I saw her, not I think, but I saw her do a lot of cool stuff. Like I saw her c climb Half Dome when she was in her 50s. Um, I actually wasn't there physically, but like she went off and did this like huge camping trip with these people that she didn't know and like climbed Half Dome and did all this crazy stuff at like in her mid 50s. And I was like, that is so cool. And she never once said, I'm too old to do this or what am I doing? Like she just kind of like has always been the kind of person that's like really just dived into life. She's like, oh, I want to climb that. I want to climb that mountain. I'm going to do it. Or I want to join this hiking group or I want to, you know, run this race or whatever it is she wants to do. She would just do it. And she never talked about like, oh my gosh, I'm too old to do this. And so that's kind of how I've always grown up with that mentality. We never talked about age being a barrier. And I really think that's been a big influence on what I think I can do in my, in my life now. And I think, um, I think a lot has to be said about mentally preparing yourself for challenges, because if you're already going into it saying, well, I'm too old or, well, this might happen, or I wonder if I'm strong enough to do this because I'm too old, you're already kind of telling yourself that that's not going to be possible. But if you go into it, thinking like, yeah, this is going to be great, or I can do this and I can do that and I'm really strong and this is how I'm going to prepare and I'm at least going to try, then you have a whole lot, you have a whole, you're already giving yourself a better outcome if you have that type of attitude. So that's, 
I'm just, um, I feel like I've been kind of on my soapbox lately about that, but I just think that, um, and I think that there, it's a really great time in distance running right now. I mean, you can, you can really see that there are a lot of people out there in their late thirties and forties and beyond. I mean, there was just a 62 year old woman who ran, oh my gosh, she ran like a 252. She just broke the record. I believe that's correct for her age group. Um, did you see that Jonathan? No, I didn't, I didn't see that. Yeah, it was an Asian woman. I think she's in. she lives in Japan. And um, yeah, she's like 60 years old and just ran a 252 marathon. So, I mean, that right there is showing awesome. you. Yeah, it's so awesome. So, Yeah, I think it's – it's um, it's um, so I, I have my eye on it from the trail world. And anytime I go to a trail race, I'm like the youngest person by – I mean, not the youngest person, but like – the average age is probably 20 years older than me. And I think a lot of that is um, like to continue to to run trail and ultra races, you need to have made a whole bunch of mistakes in, in your younger years so that you can, you know, overcome them and not make the same stupid mistakes that I've been making for the last 10 years. <laughs> um, and, you know, not make those mistakes when you're in your 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. But it's so cool to see people who are 50, 60, 70 out doing these things. And I was in um, Ure, Colorado a few weeks ago, um, southwestern part of the uh, state-ish. And um, it's, I don't know, 8,000 feet. And uh, there's a road called uh, Million Dollar Highway. And the views are just spectacular, but it's, it's an absolute like grind to get up out of this little town that's tucked away in between all the mountains. And so the first, I don't know, the first like mile out of town is like probably a 300 or 400 plus foot climb. And I was out driving further away and I, I saw two different people, man and a woman, probably 75 years old each, um, not together, but just like running separately. And they're, they're, you know, 75 years old at 8,000 feet running uphill. And I'm like, yes, I want that. I want to do that. That's like, that's my goal uh, to get there. And the only way to do that is just to make, um, you know, continue to enjoy it and do the right things and be healthy and happy and, and stuff along the way. But it's like, we're, you know, I'm 30, you're in your 40s. Like those people are, 30 to 40 they're like twice our age potentially and they're still doing it and they're still doing they're not just like jogging 5ks they're 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 climbing (laughs) mountains at 8,000 feet it's like that's so cool that is freaking so cool that's exactly what I want to (laughs) do That's exactly what I want to do. I want to be like that like 85-year-old, 90-year-old woman who's like climbing some mountain or running some ultra race. <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, that's so – I mean, like why, why, why do I want to sit at home and like lament about being old with my great-grandchildren around me? I want them all to, to come with me and like I'm going to be kicking their butt up the, up the mountain, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, – Similarly, but maybe very different, what would you tell Natalie of 20 years ago? Oh, gosh, 20 years ago. Okay. Um, I have to think about that for a minute. I think I would tell her, what are you waiting for? Don't limit yourself. Go for it now. That's what I would say. And I say that with a little bit of a caveat because when I say that, it almost sounds like like I knew that I should be trying to like, you know, run fast or, or accomplish all these goals. And for some reason I was holding myself back. And that wasn't the case um, 20 years ago. I was, I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking about, I was thinking about running marathons for fun and I didn't think about the serious part of it. But if I was say, for instance, if I was thinking about that, I would say to myself, don't limit yourself, go for it now and see what happens and give it everything that you have. And 
just don't hold back. Um, that's, that's what I would tell myself 20 years ago. Um, that being said, also, because I didn't tell myself that 20 years ago, I'm telling myself that now. Like, now is the time. So get your butt up and go for it. <laughs> I, I love it. I think that's a good place to wrap today. Um, so if we want to follow you on your adventure of just going for it, uh, where can we find you? Thank you so much for having me, Jonathan. This has been awesome. Um, so you guys can follow me at Nat Runs Far on all social media and uh, and at Sweet Run, our podcast, the Sweet Run podcast. You can follow us on social media at Sweet Run. Awesome. Thanks so much. And we'll see you out there, hopefully, on a mountain or in Southern California, on a mountain perhaps, uh, sometime soon. <laughs> yep. I love it. Let's go for a run sometime soon. Sounds good. Bye. All right, thanks. That's it for today's episode. Like many long runs, it's sad when it has to end. I hope you join in next time on For the Long Run. And in the meantime, happy trails. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean a lot to me if you shared it so that others can find it and enjoy it too. 